Chapter 28, Fighting the Persian Wars, 28.1 Introduction. In chapter 27, you learned about two very different city-states, Athens and Sparta. Sometimes their differences led these city-states to distrust each other. But between 420, 499 and 479 BCE, they had a common enemy, the Persian Empire. At that time, Persia was the largest empire the world had ever seen. Its powerful kings ruled over land in Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. During the 400s BCE, the Persians invaded Greece, and the Persian Wars began. To fight the Persians, the Greek city-states eventually banded together as allies. Allies are states that agree to help each other against a common enemy. Throughout history, soldiers have written home before battles. We can imagine the kind of letter an Athenian might have written to his family. The Persians are fierce fighters, but I will stand shoulder to shoulder with the brave men of Greece, Spartans as well as my fellow Athenians, and fight to the death. If that is what it takes to stop these murderous invaders. The tiny Greek city-states had much less land and far fewer people than Persia. How could they possibly turn back the powerful invaders? In this chapter, you will learn about important battles during the Persian Wars and discover who won them. Chapter 28.2, the Persian Empire and the Ionian Revolt. The Persians started out as a small tribe in present-day Iran. They built a large empire by conquering their neighbors. Persian archers won many battles by unleashing a storm of arrows before their enemies were close enough to use their lances or spears. At its height, the Persian Empire was the largest empire the world had ever known. It was ruled by powerful kings who conquered Mesopotamia, Asia, excuse me, Asia Minor, Syria, Egypt, and parts of India and Europe. To rule such a large area, King Darius, one of the greatest of the Persian kings, divided the empire into 20 provinces known as satrapies. He established a tax collection system and appointed officials to rule local areas, but he allowed conquered people to keep their own customs and religions. The Ionian Revolt, which began in 499 BCE, marked the beginning of the Persian, the Greek-Persian Wars. In 546 BCE, the Persians had conquered the wealthy Greek settlement of Ionia in Asia Minor. The Persians took the Ionians' farmland and harbors. They forced the Ionians to pay tributes or the regular payments of goods. The Ionians also had to serve in the Persian army. The Ionians knew they could not defeat the Persians by themselves, so they asked mainland Greece for help. Athens sent soldiers and a small fleet of ships Unfortunately for the Ionians, the Athenians went home after the initial success, leaving the small Ionian army to fight alone. In 493 BCE, the Persian army defeated the Ionians. To punish the Ionians for rebelling, the Persians destroyed the city of Miletus. They may have sold some of its people into slavery. 28.3, the Battle of Marathon, a stunning victory. After the Ionian Revolt, King Darius decided to conquer the city-states of mainland Greece. He sent me messengers to ask for presence of Greek earth and water. The presence would be a sign that the Greeks agreed to accept Persian rule, but the Greeks refused to hand over the tribute. Instead, they threw the messengers into pits and wells. Legend has it that they shouted, if you want Greek earth and water, help yourselves. Darius was furious in 490 BCE, sent a large army of foot soldiers and cavalry across the Aegean Sea by boat to Greece. The army assembled on the plain of Marathon. A brilliant general named Miletides convinced the other Greek commanders to fight the Persians at Marathon. Desperate for help, the Athenians sent a runner named Phidippides to Sparta. Phidippides ran for two days and two nights. When he arrived, he found the Spartans celebrating a religious festival. He told them, <clears throat> they told him that they could not leave Sparta until the next full moon. The Athenians and their allies had to face the Persians alone. Miletides stretched his men across a narrow valley. For several days, both sides hesitated to attack. Finally, 
Miletides <clears throat> decided to attack. He ordered the center portion of his army to advance. When the Persians came forward to meet them, he then ordered the left and right sides of his army to sweep down and attack the Persians from the sides as well. Soon the Persian soldiers were running for their ships. Then the Greeks marched back to Athens in time to defend the city against the Persian cavalry. The Greeks won a stunning victory, but their fight with the Persians was only beginning. 28.4, the Battle of Thermopylae, the bravery of the 300. After King Darius died, his son Xerxes organized another attack on Greece. Xerxes put together a huge army of more than 180,000 soldiers. To get his army to Greece, Xerxes chose to cross at Hellespont, a narrow sea channel between Europe and Asia. There he made two bridges of rope by roping hundreds of boats together with wooden boards across their bows. Then he walked his army across the channel into Europe. In 480 BCE, Xerxes marched west from Hellespont and then south. Several Greek city-states were overwhelmed. Athens and Sparta decided to work together to fight the enemy. The Athenian navy would try to stop the Persian navy. Meanwhile, the Spartan king Leonidas would try to stop the Persian army. The Spartans chose to make their stand at a place called Thermopylae, where the Persian army would have to go through a narrow pass between the mountains and the sea. Leonidas had only 6,000 to 7,000 soldiers to stop 180,000 Persians. Still, when the Persians tried to go through the pass, the Greeks drove them back. Then a Greek trader offered to show the Persians a secret path through the mountains. The path would allow them to attack the Greeks from the front and the rear at the same time. Leonidas knew that he could only delay the Persians to keep his army from being destroyed. He ordered most of his troops to escape. With a much smaller army, including 300 Spartans, he prepared to fight. The Spartans were obedient to the end. Legend says they fought until their weapons broke, then they fought with their hands. In the end, all 300 were killed, but the Greeks would never forget their bravery. 28.5, the Battle of Salamis, the Navy to the rescue. The news of a slaughter at Thermopylae reached Athens. Its citizens panicked. They boarded ships and sailed for nearby islands. They left in such a hurry that they had to leave their pets behind. Legend has it that one loyal dog swam alongside a ship following its master all the way to shore where it died. Only a small army was left to defend the city. Within two weeks, Xerxes had burned Athens to the ground. An Athenian Navy leader, Themistocles, thought he knew a way to defeat the Persians. He wanted to fight their navy in the narrow channels between the islands and the mainland. The Persians would find it hard to move their ships around to attack the Greek navy. For his plan to work, Themistocles had to get the Persian ships into a channel near a place called Salamis. So he set a trap. He sent a loyal slave to Xerxes' camp with a message. The message said, Themistocles wanted to change sides and join the Persians. If Xerxes attacked now, it said half the Greek sailors would surrender. Xerxes fell for the trick. He ordered his ships to enter the narrow waterway between Salamis and mainland to attack. As the Persians approached, the Greek ships seemed to retreat. But this was just another trick to draw the Persians further into the channel. Soon the Greeks had them surrounded. The Greek ships had wooden rams at the front. They rammed into the Persian boats, crushing their hulls and sending 300 of the ships to the bottom of the sea. The Greeks lost only 40 ships. Once again, the Greeks had beaten the mighty Persian empire. 28.6, the Battle of Plataea, the end of the Persian Wars. After the defeat at Salamis, Xerxes fled with some of his soldiers. He was afraid the Greeks would get to Hellespont first and destroy the bridges he had built. As it turned out, the bridges had already been wrecked by a fierce storm. Xerxes had, a, had to ferry his men across the water by boat. Xerxes left the rest of his army in Greece with orders to attack again in the spring. When spring arrived, the Persians approached Athens once more. The Spartans feared that the Athenians, with their city destroyed, would agree to make peace with Persia but the Athenians proudly declared their common brotherhood with the Greeks. They would fight. 
the decisive battle took place outside the town of Plataea in 479 BCE. Led by the Spartans, a force of 80,000 Greek troops destroyed the Persian army. The threat of the Persian Empire was finally over. This important victory preserved the Greeks' independence and kept Persia from conquering all of Europe. The Greeks paid a high price for their victory. Thousands of Greeks were dead, and the city of Athens was in, ruin, in ruins. But the Athenians would soon rebuild their city and raise to even greater glory. 28.7, chapter summary. In this chapter, you learned how Athens and Sparta joined forces to defeat the Persian Empire. The Persian Wars began with an Ionian revolt and ended 20 years later with the Greek victory at the Battle of Plataea. After the years, after the wars, Athens would become the center of Greek culture and expand its own empire. In the next chapter, you will tour the city at the height of its power and learn about more Greek culture.